good morning mochu one and all uh, before we begin the next panel discussion which is on digitization we would also like to showcase our uh, fab edition of e health magazine uh, this is a 17 year old magazine which writes on various aspects of healthcare and this uh, special edition is on diagnostics and we have touched upon the different strands of diagnostics here with various the uh, diagnostic segment leaders writing for us uh, our moderator for the session has also written uh, for us dr gauria and we have various industry perspective people also you know uh, written about the diagnostic segment and we have uh, nutrition and wellness also covered in this uh, edition and we have uh, quite a lot of authored articles uh, from our experts so this was our uh, feb edition of the magazine uh, which we had launched yesterday apart from this uh, we are also coming out with another edition called pharma leadership summit on 29th and 30th of april the theme of the summit is embracing digitization in pharma adopting the new normal so we would uh, like to inform all the delegates who are watching and the esteemed panelists before me that please uh, pour in your uh, you know um, uh, insights uh, for us for the summit also what should be addressed and which are the most important concerns in pharma which we need to take up and discuss that will be quite helpful for us so uh, thanks for that and uh, now getting on to the panel discussion the topic would be digital diagnostics and its future prospects uh, so we have esteemed panelists here we have dr ravi gaur director and chair medical advisory committee on quest labs welcome dr gaur uh, he is going to moderate the session he has been uh, very uh, helpful to us for the whole summit itself not just the panel leading the panel but uh, leading the whole summit who has been uh, with joint hands with the he health team to you know come out with uh, the various topics of the panel discussion we are very grateful and thankful to dr gaur for that and uh, the other esteemed panelist for the day uh, for the discussion is dr professor ashok ratin advisor pathkine labs welcome dr uh, ratin and we have uh, dr colonel jyoti kotwal senior consultant in head department of hematology sir gangaram hospital welcome ma'am Dr. Mithilesh Chandra, founder and promoter, DigiScan, leader in digital pathology and pathology consult consultancy services. Uh, welcome, Dr. Chandra, to the panel. And uh, we will uh, we have Dr. Upendra Shrinivas, managing director, Quantum Specialty Diagnostics. And we we will be having Dr. Anjali Tiwari, lab director and technical advisor of Prince George Hospital Limited, joining us soon. So over to Dr. Gaur uh, for the panel discussion. Uh, morning, everybody, and uh, so I welcome you all to this uh, Diagnostic Leader Summit, which is uh, organized by the ELETS, and uh, I think it's uh, one of the uh, most elaborate uh, summit we have uh, probably I've seen in the recent current times. It's been a two-day session, and since yesterday uh, we have. very important topics touching the diagnostics and today we have much more many more topics uh, lined up so firstly let me thank uh, elets and the organization uh, the organizers to have a, this idea at this time when the, the covid time especially uh, when diagnostic has uh, shown that without that you know we are the leaders and we probably have without us we really can't survive diagnostic has now become much more relevant in the coming to the forefront everywhere anybody talks about diagnostics and testing and right to the you know, the remote area or the primary area people are not talking about rt pcr icmr and accredited labs so that's i think is a sign which is not seen the good time and uh, so with this uh, i will like to you know firstly thank uh, all my uh, panelists and we have a very experienced panel and I'm, uh, you know it's my honor and privilege to uh, moderate this session and i hope uh, we will be able to do justice to the uh, entire topic of uh, digital diagnostics and the future prospects uh, as you all know in fact uh, uh, the uh, like any other industry uh, the last year diagnostic also adopted evolved and survived the global health crisis and i think india has done fantastically well uh one important lesson we have learned because uh, we being all uh, far away from each other we have been locked down many of us is working from home 
even uh, or maybe in a room in your uh, in the, in the, our laboratories were not able to like meet people and customers but still we have been able to deliver and uh, you know, the, the, the diagnosis and the correct diagnosis supporting our clinical friends and the patients who really require the diagnostics uh, today it's an era of uh, advanced technologies like uh, machine learning ai you know information technology in the diagnostic sector which can uh, better communicate analyze and use the information to overcome the disruption and meet cost and quality objective probably the, the the digital diagnostics era has now uh, arrived and uh, uh, it's probably getting the right direction what we were expecting somewhere a decade later it's probably come up now and we are ready for that to my mind uh, with me i'll uh, have uh, in fact introduction is already there but still i like to you know say we have Dr. Ratan. Uh, he is the, one of the most uh, experienced uh, the scientific mind in the country today. We talk, he's uh, been a various organization. He's a, probably he's a, uh, the, the resume and the profile are will take me to talk about. I really you know the ten minutes or fifteen minutes even I talk about it. So welcome to the show. Uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, Dr. Mithile Chandra. Uh, she is. Uh, one of the leading uh, surgical pathologists who adopted this practice of uh, digital uh, pathology long back when that we are not even talking about scanners that time. I think we'd like to hear from you, ma'am, as you go forward. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Jyoti Kotwal. She is uh, a very senior uh, pathologist, hematopathologist, and served in the Indian Army for a long time. She has been probably working in remote areas uh, of India of India and geographies where there's no internet and no property. And then probably she's now in the right hub of Gangaram Hospital, which is one of the most advanced hospitals today. And uh, probably we like to share her experience. He had this, today she was posted somewhere in the remote area of uh, say Ladakh and the digital technology was there. What could have been her like, you know, experience and how should have she have done justice to the technology uh, that time? Probably as we go forward with her. Uh, welcome Dr. Jyoti. Uh, we also have a uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Anjali Tiwari is uh, coming from a senior uh, pathologist and uh, from the Regency Hospital, Kanpur. Uh, we all talk about, in fact, I was talking to her the other day and we all talk about uh, uh, the big cities and the top 10 cities, but I think uh, we definitely like to hear from you, ma'am, what's really happening in the entire two and entire three cities and what is the opinion and experience of the people uh, as we go forward, we will like to hear. Dr. Opendra Srinivasan, I think, uh, firstly, let me congratulate you again for the award. But today you have got uh, the quantum special diagnostics. And he is also one of the very experienced and learned hematopathologists and uh, uh, probably working into a new generation, probably, giving a new direction to the diagnostics. Uh, more we, as we proceed, probably hear more from you. Uh, welcome you all. I think uh, with this, uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, not uh, talk much on it, but I think I'll just say a couple of one minute today in this era of digital diagnosis. Uh, we are talking about diagnostics getting digital. It's not like diagnostic uh, imaging is one part of diagnostic pathology, but there are multiple uses of uh, the, the, the digitalization and diagnosis. Uh, yesterday only we had a news that uh, they, you know, so they have created a something called E nose uh, in NASA. NASA is now using a monitor with the E nose. You just breath in and breath out, and it gives some 20, 30 parameters. And this is where we have multiple sensors, and those sensors are connected to somewhere else and to somewhere else. And probably with this, uh, you know, uh, the Islamic handheld device, which is being utilized probably for the NASA people. Then we have uh, something called as uh, uh, endoscopic capsules, the digestible capsules. People just swallow it. Again, it's actually there on ground. Just they swallow it, and after that, in some this capsule goes inside. Probably it sends all kind of what is the pH images here and there, and some morphology. It may not be that that deeper pathology, but it's connected to our remote system outside, and we are able to get some kind of information uh, and fair amount of uh, you know diagnosis. Uh, based on the capsule itself. Will it replace endoscopy? I don't know. We don't know. Probably that's a future will tell us. Similarly, we have smart toilets. I think uh, the Stanford University's uh, Professor Gambhir, who's actually developed those smart toilets, they've been used, used there in, those, in the US, where you go in the morning, probably you have a normal, uh, you know, the, uh, your uh, morning schedules, 
and uh, by the time you come out of your washroom you already have multiple parameters listed on your phone and that sends alert to the your clinicians and the people and you can you know depending on that you can plan your day plan your medication or plan your visit and plan your diet etc similarly we have now uh, you know the the uh, uh, the sink mirrors or the uh, the mirror where we just breath in and breath out probably we just have to have a deep breath and our breath probably get deposited on that mirror there's some kind of a chip out there so that again these are all various innovation probably have digital diagnostic uh, uh, but there are multiple things as a now a lot of in, uh, innovators are coming out and i think uh, more and more we will see this in future with this background i like to you know uh, start my you know uh, the first question uh, to professor ashok ratan sir uh, sir this is uh, you know uh, my first question to you is how do you define digital diagnosis especially in context of lab diagnosis and uh, and probably you have an experienced microbiologist also i like to hear from both in pathology and microbiology professor prashant dutt sir thank you sir uh, digital pathology or tele microbiology will permit a human consultant to have access to a digital image at a time or a location that is separate from physical access to the specimen digital image could be macroscopic or microscopic it requires three things one a mechanism of image uh, acquisition second a mechanism of transmitting the image and third remote receiver reviewer and interpretation types of images could be static image capture or live human operated video or recorded video or whole slide image so the definition of digital pathology could be that digital pathology incorporates the acquisition management sharing and interpretation of pathology information including slides and data in a digital environment digital slides are created when glass slides are captured with a scanning device to provide a high resolution digital image that can be view, viewed on a computer screen or mobile device digital slides can be stored can be shared over network using specialized digital pathology <coughs> software applications digital microbiology of course can make use of even whatsapp automated image analyzer tools can be also applied to assist in the interpretation and quantification of biomarkers experiments within the tissue sections digital pathology enables pathologists to engage evaluate and collaborate rapidly and remotely with transparency and consistency thus improving efficiency and productivity so we could expect improved analysis reduced errors better views improved workflow and reduced turnaround time that's night i think sir this is i think a very brief nutshell but fairly elaborate uh, and uh, you know to all of us to understand like it's something like uh, you know uh, the image is something which can be transmitted in a way uh where, wherever we are located uh, right from the handheld devices to our computer screen and maybe like you know the microscope uh, going a patsco way without an ip uh, we can report it from somewhere else uh with this uh, i know my 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 next question now goes to uh, dr mithilesh chandra ma'am uh, i think you have been uh, you know into uh, uh, almost like 10 years probably a little more than that uh because at one point of time we used to take photographs of the various uh, uh, slides and then probably utilize it for uh, opinion and sharing and uh, so uh, but and secondly on the important part what has happened is like you know digital radiology has been in for a long time uh, this has been there for last 15 years but in pathology the adoption is not much delayed it's coming now almost like 10 to 15 years so how it is like you know uh, 
uh, the, the, the differentiation from the, the digital radiology and why the, the reluctance on the digital pathology and how it is different but from conventional imaging, uh, what we were doing uh, uh, earlier and now. I can we hear from you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gaur, for including me in this panel. And uh, I must thank the organizers of this conference. Now, there are two parts of your question, Dr. Gaur. One is comparison of uh, digital radiology with the digital pathology. I'll take up this part first. Digital radiology has been in vogue for the past 10 to 15 years, where the digital images are taken, they are manipulated, they can be manipulated at the production site, they can be transmitted over the internet, and they can be manipulated at the receiver end also. This has been possible because the images are single, so they are large in size, but they are single images. Unlike radiology, digital pathology has been slow in its uptake because of various reasons. Number one, pathologists are very much comfortable with diagnosis at the microscope. So they, they, they are very apprehensive what how will they diagnose at, at the computer level. But gradually that thing is going away. People are, acceptance is increasing gradually. But the main point remains that in digital pathology, the pathology diagnosis is a complex, more complex process as compared to radiology. We sometimes have to have many number of sections to make a diagnosis. Sometimes we have to have serial cuts, deep cuts, special stains and immunohistochemistry. So the parameters which we use to arrive at the diagnosis are many and more complex. So digitization of all the slides takes time and even interpretation takes time. And that is one of the reasons why the digital pathology is more complex than the digital radiology. But things are changing now. The era for digital pathology has come. Now, the, your answer to your second part of the question is what is the difference between traditional image taking and digital pathology images in traditional image taking what we used to do we used to have a camera fixed on top of our microscope which was linked to the computer so we take a static image that is that comes on the computer we can transmit this image to other fellow pathologists or senior pathologists for their opinion or for any research work. Now, the problem with this is that this picture is taken at one fixed magnification, one fixed area, and there is a bias. There is a bias by the taker of the picture. So, suppose I want to show a picture and I don't want to show the blood vessel, I can exclude the blood vessel from the field. So, there is a bias. Instead, when we talk of picture on digital pathology, we use whole slide images. The whole slide images are the exact replica of the microscopic slide image. So, when one views the digital slide, one is seeing the entire lesion in photo. So, there is no bias. And these images, digital images, as Dr. Ratan has explained very well, how they are produced. They are produced by scanning the slide under the scanner and thousands of images are taken by the camera. They are stitched with the help of the software to produce a composite image which is the exact replica of original sector. So when the image is transmitted over the internet and it goes to the senior pathologist or specialist pathologist, that person sees the whole lesion in total. So the arriving at the diagnosis is much easier as compared to the static image. Secondly, the digital pathology has brought in the era of very fast and accurate second opinion facility. Previously, when we were to get opinion from the senior pathologist, we would send the slide by the courier maybe within the country or maybe outside overseas and the, there was time period which was taken by the courier delivery there was risk of damage to the slide during the transit all that has gone now 
you take a picture immediately you transmit over the internet within minutes it reaches the receiving pathologist and if he is free he can give the opinion the same day so that look at the time from days and weeks it has come to one day or hours and that has been the big advantage of digital pathology for second opinion undertaking and similarly in the primary pathology people are now going in for primary uh, diagnostics using the digital pathology slide so this question i will stop here yeah that's well explained uh, ultimately i think uh, one of the important factor probably also is now happened is the data size actually because in uh, you know radiology and mentioned pathology pathology is the thing the cells and everything i think data size requirements are much 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 higher and uh, you really have to have a uh, probably they say 10 times uh, 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 the uh, overall the data size requirement now with the new technologies which are available probably we can uh, transmit the data at much faster pace and now people are talking about megabyte giga gigabyte and what more bytes probably so i think that's probably also helped us uh, uh, you know Till uh, to now, you know, getting into the reality and adopting this into practice because that infrastructure is now properly available and uh, at much uh, uh, affordable cost. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, I uh, my, my next question goes to uh, Dr. Jyoti Kotwal. Uh, uh, Jyoti, I mean, uh, now what uh, Dr. Mithilesh has said that uh, the process. I probably, you know, if somebody sends you a slide, a second opinion slide. And uh, you know, uh, and you are a hematopathologist. Uh, how how will you address that? Will you be more comfortable with that? And what are the uses of uh, this digital diagnosis in uh, hematopathology? What you can do? What more you can do? Or what you cannot do? I would like to hear from you. Thank you. You are uh, mute. At first, uh, yeah. in hematopathology, the magnification is much higher. So what we are talking about, yeah, what Dr. Mithlesh mentioned uh, about the uh, film, uh, the uh, that you get the whole uh, slide image. For histopathology, that will work. But for hematopathology, you need the higher magnification. And this is a 48. So don't go into the, the hematopathology. This hematology where the digital pathology has come in is for the CBC and the peripheral smear. And that is being used when it comes to a second opinion of telepathology. That's what the question you asked me. Then it uh, the whole uh, uh, slide imaging in a bone marrow biopsy would help. But as a hematologist, you don't report a bone marrow biopsy without looking at the bone marrow aspirate smears because there are so many things in morphology which would be mixed. Mix missed out yes you're missing you out i think we're missing uh, jyoti's connection somewhere uh, uh you know i think uh, what uh, dr jyoti start i understand i think what uh, she's trying to say is uh, the higher magnification in hematology requires a lot of uh, smear and cytology uh, along with the tissue and then oil immersion probably that's the lens system Higher the magnification, and uh, that's something. But uh, Mithila is like to anything add on this? Uh. Yeah, you see, in hematology, there is a problem of the size of the image. If we want to take the whole smear, it the uh, it will run into hundreds of gigabytes, right? It is not possible. So what uh, people do is they take the representative area of the hematology, yeah. which may be uh, smaller, but which has got the representative cells, and they. Uh, digitize that area which gives the diagnostic uh, feature and they are sent for consultation. So size of the image is one of the concerns in metallurgy and similarly in cytology if we talk about in cytology the cells are too many and even one cell if we miss it we may miss the diagnosis and another point in cytology and in metallurgy also are that these structures are three dimensional in contrast to the histopathology, where it is a flatter section because of sectioning. So these three-dimensional cells, they do not come into focus so well as the flat sections are. Though we have got some some uh, ways to get over that problem, and that is by the Z-scanning. Uh, we do the Z-scanning.
the stacking and do the scan. So the, all the layers of the smear are uh, are uh, coming to the picture. But yes, certainly there is certain technical uh, problem in hematology and cytology as compared to histopathology. Great. And then Dr. Jyoti is back here. Dr. Jyoti, like any other thing you feel that uh, hematopathology uh, where we can uh, make use of uh, uh, digital pathology and which can augment actually our uh, reporting process? See, this is when I'm sorry, there's an issue of signal. I think we are having some internet connection issues with uh, Dr. Jyoti. Uh, I think a quick walk before she I think gets it on. I think Dr. Upendra, you also like just one line comment on this. But I think I'll come back to your question separately. But I think one line comment on this. Can you add something to this hematopathology and this? Yeah, I mean, as uh, Dr. Jyoti was pointing out, it's a little bit tricky as far as hematopathology is concerned. We need to see a whole lot of area to actually come to your final conclusion. But uh, as Dr. Mitlesh was pointing out, uh, with the kind of imagery and uh, the kind of optics that we have these days. If some taker can take the most representative area, I think our problem will be solved in most of the cases. I, I, I don't see that as a major concern going forward with the kind of technologies that are going to evolve in the future. Okay, great. Uh, great to hear that. I think uh, 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 then I think our next, we, I just move on to Dr. Next question to Dr. Anjali Tiwari. So, sir, we have been hearing like the, the advancement which is happening, how uh, we have been using that digital pathology. Now, West has already adopted it uh, in, I think, bigger hospitals, bigger labs, and the, the, even the senior conventional, uh, you know, experienced are uh, pathologists and the diagnostic specialists. They are now utilizing it for uh, augmenting their report. I'd like to hear from you because you come from... Uh, uh, no, uh, of course, uh, probably Kanpur is not really a tier two. It's almost as big city like any <laughs> other place and well advanced. Uh, so I would like to hear from you. What you know, like the challenges and what do you feel that uh, the thought process is out there and what really think you know feel because I think uh, in second opinion probably in Delhi still or maybe you know we have one NCR in Gurgaon, another area in Noida probably sometime I mean slides had to be sent takes my morning to evening. But in a small town, it could be uh, five professors sitting inside, you know, within uh, five kilometers of the area. You can really, you know, walk in and take an opinion. Then I think in these cities, what are the, you know, the uh, the challenges in adaptation of this tire? And is it a skill issue or the infrastructure issue? Or where do you see that uh, adaptation and adoption technology will uh, will happen and will not happen? If not happen, when is likely to happen? So Anjali, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ravi. And first of all, I want to thank uh, Elet and uh, uh, Dr. Ravi uh, that, uh, for including me in this panel discussion. And before looking into the challenges which we uh, 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 will come uh, and uh, see in future in including digital pathology in our routine workup, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, basically. Uh, uh, discuss the and understand the present uh, spread of pathology labs in tier two and tier three cities because that's very important as you correctly said doctor that uh, kanpur is not uh, as small a town as any other town and here it is possible for us that five of the doctors sitting within five kilometers and where we can discuss cases but tier two cities, there are certain towns uh, in tier two and tier three cities where not many experienced pathologists are available because you would definitely agree that we are uh, uh, we have so much of uh, shortage of uh, specialists in India. And uh, we face this kind of problem. Often we get uh, some of the images from uh, uh, smaller towns like you know, Muradabad or uh, Bareilly and all these places. And sometimes they want our opinion. And they, uh, since they are not using uh, proper digital platforms, it, it becomes difficult at times for us to comment on those uh, you know, images. So uh, the thing is that most of these towns have a few large automated uh, pathologies, but majority of the labs are unstructured and smaller labs run by 
uh, either uh, pathologist or non pathology people some uh, most of the labs have either only mbbs working and they also get some of the surgical pathology specimens which they have to send to certain centers so uh, and tier 3 cities you will find not even big labs are available where they can you know take an opinion so there are various challenges and i first uh, feel that the primary most challenge is the awareness of digital pathology which we need to tell them and we need to convince the smaller or medium sized laboratories that uh, it will not take away their business rather it is going to uh, you know give them certain benefits of faster cat and standard standardization and then they can even take opinion on uh, frozen sections it will share the knowledge or uh, you know uh they can always consult with experienced pathologist if they go for digital pathologies so the primary most concern is awareness and making them you know uh convince about it because this really requires a shift in attitude from microscope to uh, you know uh, screen and many a times we find that the technological barrier is in mind which is a reality even for doctors at time so i mean for a non uh, pathologist person running a lab and taking consultation might take a longer time then another challenge would be as we are facing here that sometimes the voice goes sometimes the video goes away so another challenge is infrastructure which all of us face in india as such so in infrastructure will not only include that uh, i mean uh, uh, the the tissue processing system or the scanners or you know uh, some kind of high speed internet local computer network and of course if we want to store this uh, much of data then the cost of cloud uh, storage etc i mean that's another challenge which we need to convince them and which we need to face and definitely i think now with government's focus on quite digitization so like i feel that they will definitely take care of the faster internet services so probably uh, in future this kind of problem will not be faced then apart from this i would uh, uh, definitely uh, say that uh, uh, because of the disparate training which is there and uh, the skill personals are less so once we implement this kind of digitization which might take some time and initiative from government as well as private sector and if we could have some kind of nodal centers both government and private which can provide digital solutions and networking then probably we can easily convince many of the small labs Uh, which will be uh, i think willing to connect to better organized labs and taking uh, opinion from the experienced personals so i uh, think i can hear you i think probably we'll hear uh, more as we move ahead i think two important thing coming out here is uh, i will i think uh, this uh, i ask i think uh, low like uh, dr ratan and dr nikhil chandra should note down this question and probably come back later Uh, because you know they they the doctor son you are come from path kind background they have labs in very very small small towns also and in delhi and gurgaon also same thing not to make like you have been uh, you know you have uh, uh, you are talking about uh, uh, and you have been reporting uh, on various things so where are the staining quality of the slides somewhere stain in different with you know like small town or big town differentiation probably we like to hear from you in the you know next uh, round of question we can prepare for that but before that you know uh, what's the important uh, point what is uh, dr anjali has got down here is uh, uh, the utility here is uh, the first the frozen section probably this is an area with uh, expertise is less and uh, probably the digital pathology can really help out uh, the real time frozen section reporting uh, as we move ahead uh, there is always been a, you know the shortage of pathologists at tier 2 and tier 3 cities so instead of going for uh, you know the sub speciality or a super speciality second opinion probably there will be a need of uh, even the primary uh, diagnostic because that's taking a lot of time because logistics are an issue in uh, in most town we have uh, not many trained uh, uh, pathologists uh, who are actually doing his pathology and uh, lastly one the important point uh, 
what she mentioned was, uh, uh, you can say that, uh, the, the, the thing about the, uh, you can say uh, the, the, uh, the training part, probably if uh, our uh, you know, postgraduate students actually, if they are trained into digital pathology, nodal center she was talking about, if they're trained into the uh, medical college and middle schools at that point of time, they will be probably, you know, uh, leading the show as we move because this is an era of like pathology is definitely the you know experience. More experience you are, better at better healthcare in any case been like this. So uh, the senior the people, better you report on the pathology, especially images and slides. So training but probably start has to start from the medical college. Uh, can I can I make yeah. two points on this uh, issue? So yeah. I want to say a few things on this issue. As the last point you are talking about, the training of uh, junior doctors or pathologists at that stage only into the digi digital pathology. Now what we are recently doing is we are conducting slide seminars and we are uh, doing seminars using digital slides so that the youngsters get exposed to seeing the slides and reporting on them. That is one effort we are making from our side to train the juniors into the dig digital pathology. Secondly, I would like to say what Dr. Anjali has said. One point is important point is that for digital pathology opinion by the labs, the scanner has to be kept at the peripheral lab, which is in the small town. And that lab may not have infrastructure of the internet, etc., so well to transmit the image to the bigger town or to the other pathologist. So infrastructure and Thirdly, the cost of the equipment itself. At present, these are costly equipments and no one uh, can think of affording them easily. So unless the, the manufacturing uh, side of the scanners, they bring down the prices to affordable levels, the infrastructure uh, becomes better and improves. Till then, you know, the chances are that the things will continue like this only. So it is yeah, a multi totally, multi-pronged attack which has to be thought about to to make it popular among the smaller towns i, I totally agree with you dr mitley as your senior experience wisdom speaking here because uh, i think its cost is one of the important but i think over time we have seen that uh, uh, the, the cost of scanners have come down quality is improved and uh, but i think a lot needs to be done here uh, as we move forward and i think uh, we're hopeful that the manufacturers are here and listening to this and probably they will uh, work out something and uh, because there's going to be some kind of a return of investment also uh, from the lab, because unless they have a vi economic viability, they will probably not invest into it. But moving on from here, uh, I move Dr. Obeyendra Shenewa. So you have, uh, you know, a very, I've uh, interacted with you yesterday and a couple of times back. I think I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, really, you know, you are uh, one of the, uh, have got very innovative ideas about digital pathology and not only the, like the slides, imaging and reporting, because the digitalization is at every level is a core mantra in healthcare now today. What can be added benefits when we report on digital images? That's what I like. Not only the reporting is one part, what are the various other benefits you can? Yeah, I mean, in fact, uh, it has become a mantra these days because of uh, the way at which uh, IT and information technology is growing. I think it's high time that uh, diagnostics also <laughs> adopt these kind of uh, uh, technology changes and uh, for us to uh, I mean, it, I mean, unfortunately, it has not picked up uh, the digital transformation as a disruptor in the industry, has not picked up uh, as uh, as it was there in uh, hospital industry as well as in radiology. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, uh, most of the advantages that we get out of this is already discussed by the earlier panelists. Uh, the advantages being the time which can cut across geographies in terms of getting second opinions and the reporting will be very swift and all that. And uh, not only the, uh, that advantage, we have a scale up of operations. If you need to do it at a larger number of uh, numbers, then uh, it can uh, have the potential of scaling up as well. And uh, uh, the, as BAS is eliminated, the kind of quality of reporting and the kind of uh, uh, the quality that it adds to the entire uh, thing is, uh, is going to be another uh, biggest advantage. Apart from these advantages, what I would actually more focus on the roadblocks of adoption of this particular technology in Tier 2 and other cities is uh, the major, major factor is if you look at the Indian diagnostic pie, 80% of it is a totally disorganized sector and only 20% is the organized sector. And uh, if you look at the mean digital spend on the 
infrastructure that is required uh, for delivering these kind of high quality and quicker turnaround time kind of reports uh, that exchanges uh, uh, throughout geographies. I mean, the, the kind of infrastructure spend is not just not there, apart from lack of awareness in tier two and tier three cities. Uh, the moment, uh, I, I mean, India is not yet open for uh, you know uh, bringing in insurance sectors into uh, diagnostics. Once that happens, there will be some enforcer who will be able to mandate these kind of spends on the in digital infrastructure that which is which is lacking in many many uh, laboratories uh, in our country. Uh, the other thing is uh, there is uh, no regulation as such. If the regulation uh, comes up hard, and most of the unorganized sector will get organized, and probably the digital spend will be more, and uh, the kind of quality of reporting also improves. And that's where I think uh, we need to focus on. Uh, that that's my take on uh, as far as uh, getting digital transformation. And then the biggest cause is that again digital divide. Awareness is just not there. And once. Uh, all the digital infrastructure is in place and if it is enforced on uh, all these kind of uh, labs probably we can see someday where uh, digital uh, pathology is going to be the order of the day great dr open i think uh, we'll hear from more from you as we go forward i think you touched a very important point that's something about the regulation and accreditation uh dr Ratan, i think i'd like to ask you from sir i mean uh, what regulatory challenges you feel and will they come and how will they come? Because uh, we have seen that uh, in the West uh, uh, has adopted many of these uh, uh, cap, especially has got some, uh, you know, an FDA has something additional. But I think in India, what are the regulatory challenges and uh, how we can take it forward? Uh, so, um, let me first share about telemicrobiology. Um, okay. And then I'll come to the regulatory part. Telemicrobiology is entirely possible with very little infrastructure requirement. Um, at the moment, uh, as you know, a pathkind has 63 labs and we have five, five microbiologists spread over a few uh, locations. So whenever there's a query, they WhatsApp the, uh, WhatsApp the photograph and send the static photograph on WhatsApp group for asking for second opinion or even identification. Uh, we've also used the video and uh, there have been times when we got, uh, uh, we've got got the, uh, you can see trachomonas vaginalis only when it's motile, then it becomes easier to identify. Same is the case with, uh, uh, with microfilaria. When you see microfilaria moving, it's easy to identify. So that's been possible. And all that is required is a small attachment to remove one of the eyepiece and uh, use your iPhone to transmit the image to us. Uh, about the regulatory requirement, I remember that uh, with NABL, once we have raised the issue of signing for, uh, for cyt uh, cytogenetics, and they said that, no, you cannot sign it sign it remotely. You must be present at the site. I, of course, uh, you might be aware that the Board of Governors, which replaced MCI on 24th March 2020, issued telemedicine practice guidelines. And uh, COVID has really helped in adaptation of telemedicine. But telepathology doesn't figure into that. And uh, I guess it is both a reluctance on the part of uh, the pathologist and the, uh, and the regulators. But I'm sure we're going to move maybe initially towards telemicrobiology permission through the regulators and subsequently to telepathology. That will be sooner than later. That's, I think, interesting thought. I think, uh, Dr. Ratan, I think we definitely require, uh, you know, this, this because you, the disruptive innovation, what you mentioned about microbiology, you can really, you know, have a video and probably, you know, there are people, I know that some companies are working on, especially on the sperm analysis, uh, where their, you know, patient has to be uncomfortable giving samples at the lab. They probably give it their area at home and probably after some time they send the videos, maybe some kind of a handheld device. I think something similar, what, uh, you know, filaria and all this thing, we can have videos and remotely you can report. Uh, I think this is a big disruption uh, in waiting. 
and uh, soon probably many labs are going to definitely adopt that and but that's i think before that uh, i think uh, there's probably a strong need for the daily pathology regulator the regulation you know direction on it because if you have to be physically present and in this country where the infrastructure is lacking where the skill is lacking pathologists the uh, labs are five to 10 times the number of pathologists how will be able to deliver the last uh, the, the diagnostic of the last man out uh, on the post i think it's important to have some kind of a directive probably you know collectively we all can uh, you know write back and go back and there are i think bodies were working on it to my mind and soon we should be able to and i think you are one of the leaders that probably we'll expect from you and not late maybe many more to take up the issue at the right forum sometime uh with this uh, i think we have missed out of jyoti is uh, not here i'll come back to dr mitlesh uh, again you know and this is something uh, besides reporting uh, you know for the uh, the, the part uh, uh, how can we utilize uh, this in our routine practice and what are the other benefits of something uh, one, one one you already mentioned about these uh, the the training and uh, education but i think we like to hear more from you on that part yeah uh, you see, presently, what uh, digital pathology is being used is for second consultation. Uh, now, guidelines for primary consultation have also been approved by FDA for uh, in a limited manner. So very soon, digital pathology will be used for primary diagnosis also. But what is happening, the future of digital pathology is going to be bright with the development of artificial intelligence and this is what is going to change the game in pathology now many companies are developing algorithm algorithms for pre predicting the prognostic factors the risk factors uh, the di diagnosis between benign and malignant the grading of the malignant tumors so these developments are going to help out the pathologist in making the diagnosis which is more accurate and the time taken will be much less and this artificial intelligence is going to be game changer and we hope that we pathologists are not driven out of our jobs i hope so but really it should be a helper to us rather than a detractor for us there are areas in pathology where people have already prepared softwares like prosthetic carcinomas they will tell that which patient is going to uh, have respond respond to the chemotherapy or not respond to the chemotherapy based on the examination of the slide alone what the human eye cannot see deep learning tools can see many more parameters which we can miss by human eye and they analyze and they uh, infer in infer uh, information from that as to whether the patient is going to get advanced disease or not so which we cannot uh, predict by seeing the slide under the, uh, ourselves as pathologists. So what I say that the future of digital pathology lies in application of artificial intelligence in diagnostics. That is what may take it. Great, great to hear that. I think we always, uh, I'm excited always with the new technologies, especially the digital technologies taking uh, us forward. And I think that's the future. But I think uh, from my mind, I'm very clear here, the, uh, Pathologists need to adopt it. They have to change their mindset because it's not like this, this is going to take away a job of pathologists. No, never probably. It can never take that space. But yes, and we have to change our, utilize this technology to augment our intelligence. I think more than artificial intelligence, it will be augmented intelligence and probably we can make our reports much better. Like instead of counting, you know, uh, probably about 100 cells okay. of, uh, you know, in an area, the computer can do the counting part and we can do a more of focus on many other things what are they you know, how many nucleoli are of varying size probably what is the area and necrosis percentage probably will this all lead to some kind of a newer uh, risk score and maybe a better classification or prognostic indication uh, because and you never know because uh, it can lead to what you mentioned about the artificial intelligence and the analytics coming out of it can lead to you know, algorithms coming out of it because there have been studies where we've seen that people doing, especially the breast cancer, uh, their uh, the, the, the uh, digital pathology slides routinely they're coming out of multiple parameters and scores, and they were able to predict that this is going to be a ER PR positive and HER2 negative or kind of HER2 negativity from the digital images probably when the taught machine learning and artificial intelligence analytic was drawn. 
we never know going forward you may not uh, you probably have 80 90% of surety in the area where there is though people can't afford molecular people can't uh, the, the it is not possible in some such circumstances they will have a risk score kind of a thing and say okay this patient is a stable pathology but probably ask when the but augmented intelligent digital pathology we should be able to say 90% chance of this is is a er pr plus and her2 negative or a yc worse or something like that i think this is probably we definitely you know and one another important issue is one is the archival probably you know we have us to have lot of storage space all across probably all the slides can be archived used for teaching for publication for and uh, probably printing in because there are atlases and all this thing this is i think one important use that we can save on that uh, this space uh, dr upendra i think i'd like to hear from you on this part more uh, on the analytical part and uh, intelligence part uh, how yeah. will you integrate this into our routine uh, uh, complete diagnostics not like yeah. from molecular yeah. to cytology yeah uh the integration interfaces as i see it are uh, as uh, somebody was telling the panelists uh that integration can be done into education training and then archival of material and dissemination of information that is one area and uh, that that can enhance uh, the dissemination of uh, digital pathology knowledge and the second uh, aspect is uh, as madam was telling artificial intelligence is uh, coming up in a big way and uh, giving us a pattern based diagnosis and uh, thereby Uh, increasing our repertoire of differential diagnosis where uh, the, the machine itself will prompt us to consider a few differential diagnosis based on the patterns that it's going to uh, detect based on the scanning of the entire uh, slide uh, and uh, apart from uh, tissue diagnostics i mean you have uh, other analytics like the other one uh, area which has picked up tremendously in the last decade is oncogenomics oncogenomics in cancers where the genomic profiling personalized diagnosis personalized treatment based on what that uh, diagnosis actually meant if there are any markers to be attacked on targeted basis therapies that again is data is usually building up on that and uh, the other uh, area uh, is that uh, governments can actually look into that and invest in these kind of technology so that they can so already actually started in few uh, small population countries and cash rich countries they've already started doing this community level uh, screening of all the genomic profiling of those patients so that thereby understand uh, the incidence and prevalence of certain diseases um, so that they can have a uh, forehand information so that they they can uh, budget their health uh, budgets and then make a policy uh, decisions out of it and uh, these kind of data can even be monetized and supply to insurers or supply to a pharma based companies where they can develop a few more uh, target therapy uh, molecules these are some of the areas which actually the digital transformation as a disruptor is making a lot of changes and uh, it is soon uh, is going to come in a very very big way i think I, ibm watson is one such uh, 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 one such uh, company i think uh, they are doing a good job out of it and these are some of the areas where uh, Uh, a complete digital transformation and adaptation of this technology into diagnostic industry is going to integrate us into the main healthcare domain and thereby uh, you know, I mean facilitate uh, the pay better patient management great uh, i think that's something what we are always looking for the integration probably and uh, you know the one of the important point you touched about like the uh, hot spot studies Uh, in the you know defining various zones uh, because i think there a lot of algorithms not only did one diagnostic biochemical parameter probably there's a different aspect of digitalization and diagnosis where we have uh, the, the biochemical or some kind of parameters along with that we have uh, what's the impact kind of environment in the, in the area it is with the humid or bit india has a diverse kind of environment and temperatures across country the what kind of lifestyle what culture what's uh, the, the key occupation probably based on all this together if we can come out with a score and say the risk score or maybe you know the inter- that become a more of a personalized diagnosis because this era of precision medicine and personalized medicine so probably we are going to have a very personalized score health check kind of a thing where every individual maybe 10 individuals have a similar kind of a lipid profile or a blood parameter but everybody have a different different risk probably that's another thing another aspect of digital diagnosis as we Uh, and that get that the whole risk get redefined again and again and refined again and again the more number of people are enrolled and uh, probably defining the uh, epidemics probably and make it be endemic zones and in one area we suppose we are seeing more number of uh, some uh, cbc changes or some kind of a complaints along with the other blood parameters it can probably predict oh this is going to have a heading for the new or some kind of a thing in future probably that's another area we will look into it but lastly i'll come back yeah see so again 
this will actually help us building up lot of uh, disease specific registries oncology related immunology hla based and uh, bone marrow uh, donor uh, related kind of uh, registries all that can data can be obtained using this kind of technology yeah. that, that, that that's interesting yeah definitely is good that that's need of the r probably the country today Dr. Anjali, I'll come back to you. I think Dr. Jyoti is uh, dropped out uh, to some emergency in the hospital. Dr. Anjali, I'll come back to you because now you have heard all that. I think uh, what will be your thought process? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what really, uh, you know, the because you have to convince probably uh, the hospital uh, management, the people, and say like, you know, uh, I need this. This is how the benefits return. What's the kind of return of investment you feel that will they be able to? Because that's all, diagnostics is always like you know they always talk about you know kam chal raha let it be you know why do you want to invest more but I want to hear from button. you because I think uh, Dr Anjali please we can't hear you Dr Anjali yeah you're on a mute I think sorry yeah. uh, definitely you know uh, uh, a big investment is required if we move towards uh, digital pathology. But uh, as uh, Madam said that the various uh, solutions are available, there are few like single slide uh, um, uh, scanner to multiple slide scanners and nano zoomers, etc. So the cost would vary and uh, it is difficult, but uh, the, the organizations like where I am working, it might not be so difficult to convince the management to go for a com uh, complete digital solutions. Because uh, as we move ahead, we have to adopt to newer technologies, definitely, which is going to benefit not only us as a pathologist in making the diagnosis, but definitely it's going to um, assist uh, the clinicians also in making their cognitive uh, decision making process uh, in future if we include AI uh, uh, along with digital pathology. So it is going to benefit uh, humanity per se because uh, ultimate benefit would be uh, beneficiary would be the patient where uh, I mean uh, with this kind of process they can uh, even staying at remote uh, places or tier two tier three cities they can have opinion of most expert pathologists and most expert uh, you know specialists basically. So uh, uh, definitely, you know, uh, investment would be huge, but I think we can justify returns because uh, uh, of this uh, one is patient would be benefited. We will get to learn a lot through various discussions and, uh, you know, uh, academic exchanges with the experts and uh, the clinicians would be benefited. So um, uh, I don't think it, it, it will be very difficult to convince. Uh, the bigger hospitals but the two smaller ones as i suggested earlier that would be very nice if we could have these kind of uh, you know uh, basically small uh, centers nodal centers if uh, we could make you know the, like those pathology uh, uh, setups who have multiple multi-city uh, uh, you know uh, labs they can always move ahead in this direction and they can benefit the local people and here i would like to say only one thing that whenever i think about these things and it might uh, uh, sound very utopian thought per se but i always remember that like uh, when Mahatma gandhi gave a talisman to the new cabinet at the time of independence he said keep the last man in your vision and i feel that if somehow with our effort we could digitalize uh, pathology and we could use this kind of technology this would be able to do the uh, i mean the uh, at least uh, in our work we can do it and it will be an equalizer uh, where the last man can consult the best pathologists in india or abroad from his own area for a, a minimal cost yeah, that's, I think, rightly said. That's what we require today. The disruptive innovations have to reach the last minute post. And, yes. uh, of course, one point you really touched on international opinion anywhere across. But I think uh, I've always been uh, found of uh, opening something like a, uh, what Dr. McLeish mentioned, that we required to have a scanner at the remote places. Costs have substantially come down now. I think we need to, have to come down further. We need to have something like a patch ATM. We just walk in there and you scan your slide and come back and after that internationally all across experts whomsoever you want just give them a click and it's reported from there uh, i think that's going to be interesting thought uh, 
I think we are just two minutes left. I'll like come back to all of you probably to yeah. the last. Uh, can I, you know, yeah. yeah can I raise one point, Doctor Gaur? Yes, please. Uh, what what we are saying about uh, diagnostics is computational pathology is the new new discipline which has developed, which uses not only the slide data but all the data of the patient. Uh, whether it is biochemical, as you were saying, geographical, or it is biochemical, or clinical, or radiological. So all the data is computed together, and then the patient is analyzed, and the personal risk, etc., are predicted, and that leads to personalized health care. And this is what is the digital pathology is going to do at the end of the day. That yeah, it that is definitely, that, definitely, that's something we're talking about personalized diagnosis today and that's a era. And Dr. Rajshun, I think before we close down, I'd like to have a one minute something from you. What is the takeaway and what is what here? Like what should be the like, uh, how do we take it forward? And what's your thought on it? So it's like uh, we are all digitally connected with boots on the ground. So if there are boots on the ground to get the slides, then digitally we are all connected so that the, nobody feels alone. We can take second opinion anytime and gain from each other's knowledge. Very nice. I think we, uh, like we said, we can't. Uh, we have to be connected. We have to be together. And we have to utilize this uh, the new technology. But Opendra, just about thirty seconds you have. Yeah, I mean uh, the time, uh, the need of the time is to ensure a policy where it mandates uh, everybody to adopt. Uh, Newer technologies because it's going to take us in a, in a, in a better uh, position. So that's what I actually foresee uh, uh, things happening from the government side and a lot of regulation. And I wanted to actually uh, insurance to have a bigger role. Uh, unless that comes into force, uh, the unorganized sector won't be, uh, you know, uh, putting, put, putting itself into uh, order. That that's where uh, most of the you know disadvantages are you know, as far as the diagnostic industry in India is concerned. Unorganized sector in order yeah i think great i think we have now touched our finished our timing it was great hearing from all of you i think the last important part i think take away from the session probably we need to one of the important thing is i think the cost has to come down scanners cannot be central places okay but they should be more in the peripheral centers and so that the images can come they need for skilling and the nodal center to come up where people are skilled awareness of course they are but i think now it's time that awareness is translated into actions on ground and uh, and then lastly, I think the telepathology regulatory, I think the guidelines we're looking for, uh, you know, important. I think I'll sum up with this, like, unless you have, uh, you know, they, I just started the Bill Gates mentioned once, and he still keeps saying, if your business is not an internet, then soon we will be out of business. We need to really be there on this space and we need to work on this. But yes, an important part is without pathologists, uh, we really cannot make it success. Uh, the digital pathology diagnosis can never replace pathologists. We have to utilize this technology to augment our intelligence and deliver and our focus more on something on integrating in newer, newer modalities and analytics and which is uh, uh, the need of the hour so that we become more of a clinical partner to the, uh, to the clinicians and guide them because they have a huge task on their head and then they depend a lot on us and that's, they're going to be more dependent on us more and more now because the new advanced technologies so whether it's a, a anatomic pathology, surgical pathology, biochemical, everything, molecular biology, I think all of them together, I think pathologists have to upgrade, think about it, and utilize this uh, uh, the, the the new digital diagnostic era and to deliver the better outcome and the better solution for the benefit of the patient. Thank you so much to everybody, and thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I look forward to take uh, digital pathology on ground, and I think maybe sometime we see us all of us across somewhere on the ground and the, the COVID is over. Thank you so much again. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot to all the panelists, uh, especially to Dr. Gaur for moderating the session so smoothly. Very important uh, points made by the panelists. Uh, uh, like, you know, insurance is a must and, you know, a lot of one or two major points which are, as a takeaway, we are uh, taking it. Uh, so we would like to give the participation certificate to all the panelists and the moderator. Deepa, can you please help with that? Thanks a lot, Dr. Uh, Ravi Gaur, for moderating the session. Director and Chair, Medical Advisory Committee on Quest Labs. Thanks Thank a lot, you. sir. Professor Dr. Ashok Ratan, Advisor, Pathkind Labs. Thanks a lot for your uh, inputs, uh, Dr. Ratan. 
डॉक्टर कर्नल ज्योति कोटवाल वी वांटेड टू लिसन टू यू बट देयर वाज सम इंटरप्शन वी विल गेट बैक टू यू ऑन दैट या वी मिस्ड यू इन द पैनल डॉक्टर मिथिलेश चंद्र फाउंडर एंड प्रमोटर डिजी स्कैन लीडर इन डिजिटल पैथोलॉजी एंड पैथोलॉजी कंसल्टेंसी सर्विसेज वेरी ग्रेट पॉइंट्स मेड बाय यू मैम थैंक यू लॉट फॉर दैट एंड डॉक्टर अंजलि तिवारी दो वी वर नॉट एबल टू Uh, see your video, but the points you made were clear and loud, and we were able to hear that, ma'am. Thanks a lot for that, and thanks a lot, Dr. Upendra, Managing Director, Quantum Specialty Diagnostics, for your inputs. So, thanks a lot to each one of you. We will keep coming back to you for more inputs and summits like this. Please keep uh, us, uh, you know, informed with your inputs. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much.